have set up a light trap as you can see. So this is going to be a creepy crawly episode. Currently hiking up the hill in Sentosa with a bunch of researchers. It's going to be an adventure, a night adventure. Hello, oh, hello. Hello, hello. Dr. Ang, yes. ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao. This is Dr. Ang Yi Chen. Hi guys. I'm conducting a night survey right now. Later, we're going to set up a light trap and then we'll uh, see what insects we get. Okay. Like that. Yes, I am. The best time to set up a light trap is usually when it's dusk, when the sun's going down. As the sun gets darker and darker and darker, the MV lamp will be brighter and brighter, brighter comparatively. That's why the insects will start swarming towards the MV lamp. So, he mentioned about the mercury vapor lamp. So that is a very common lamp that is used to attract insects because the wavelength, wavelength that comes up from the mercury element actually attracts a lot of the insects. So using different elements, you take different wavelength then you get a lot of insects or very little insects. Huh? You saw the ant lions? Have you fed the ant lions? You mean the one on the ground, the nymph yeah, or the... Yeah, yeah. No, the nymphs. Let's go feed the ant lions. Ooh. I'm going to dig out one of them just to show you how they look. There's the fella. So the head is here, the mouth parts nice and sharp. It'll use the body to flip the sand out to hit the end to push it down into the uh, base again. Oh. It's, got, it's, got, it's got a bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna yeah. haul it in. So so the venom, right? It's it's gonna it's gonna envenomate it. Okay, and then slowly the end will die and then it'll just pull it down in to suck its uh, juices up. We're heading to the location where we'll set up the light trap and hopefully attract a lot of nocturnal insects, probably lots of moths. Yeah. I think it's okay. So I actually took an insect module in back in my university days and I really enjoyed it. It opened my eyes up to a world of insects. Uh, do you do this before? No, I never. Eh. My, my, my prof was so cool. <laughs> my prof only just like bring us around here and there in a the day. No. Oh wow, there's a nice cricket here. You can see the shadow. But when you look in front, you can see at the end there's the long ovipositor, which is the, the long thing, like a needle-like thing. So that's the egg-laying organ for female insects. So only females will have that long thing behind. So yeah, it's very obvious in crickets, katydids and grasshoppers. So this is called an aspirator, well, uh, a jury-rigged aspirator. So you put your mouth in and you suck it. Okay, Whoa. so insects will go inside here. That there's sounds a, dangerous. Don't worry, there's a little like a <laughs> nest there to stop the insects from going Oh, in. okay. You know, I see here in the Japanese game show where there's two girls just trying to blow the cockroach. Moth and other insects, right? They, in the night time, they use the moonlight to navigate around. So moonlight is a very faint kind of light. And when light was invented, the insects didn't have enough time to evolve to get used to the light. So they just kind of disorientated. So whenever you shine a bright light, yes, especially for a mercury vapor lamp, where it's exactly their wavelength, then they were just like, wow, so bright, let me go to there. And then they just like crawl around and stay there because they're just, they're just blur. Lah. So they're not exactly the brightest animal. So the students are trying to get insects from different orders, meaning different groups. Nah. So yeah, if you get two different cricket, right? even though they are different, but they are both cricket, yeah, you won't get very high score. <laughs> they found an assassin bug, but I think one of the students took it already. Bugs usually, they are like herbivores, but assassin bug actually kills animals. You know, they have this like long rostrum which acts like a spear that they spit onto animals. Is that a Yes, it is. It's actually like a dried leaf forest cockroach. They are special like forest type cockroaches, so you can really find them in the forest. Mainly the leaf litter area lah. So it was actually around here. They're actually very cute. You have a close-up shot of them, right? Their eyes look like they're wearing black sunglasses. Yeah, let's go. So we found a praying mantis. And can you see how their, the front pair of legs is like raptorial, so they're always like in this position so that they can lunge at any prey. And their head, they are triangular shape because their two eyes are adapted to have a wide range of vision because they are predators. So Dr. Ang is bringing some of the students out for a night walk. We're going to trail behind and see what else we can find. <gasps> Exciting! Look at this beetle. This is very cute. I don't want a beetle with this, but yeah. I just saw the shiny butt. I found a dragonfly. It was at the light trap. Oh! Whoa. So what constitutes an insect? Basically, insects are probably the only animal that has six legs and three body parts. Yeah, and they will have a pair of antennae. Um, some have wings, some don't have wings. He was showing us this mold. Whoa, what's that? Oh, cicada mold. Whoa, 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 that's so cute. So here we have some cicada molds. 
So cicada is a type of insect and you know when insect before they become an adult they will molt to take off the, you know, the old exoskeleton to grow bigger. Yeah, and they will leave the mold behind like this. As you can see, the back, there's like a hole. So that's where the old exoskeleton cracks and the new cicada emerges. We are seeing a bunch of weaver ants constructing a nest. So it's very interesting. They have like a certain way of folding the leaves and then they will stick it together using larval silk. Yeah, so they actually bring their larvae here. They'll tap on the head and the larvae will secrete silk and then they use it as a form of glue to kind of cover the whole leaf. Oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but please don't touch it. Things gonna bite you like really bad. Wow, what do you find? Millipede! Animals such as millipedes, spiders, and some worms are often mistaken as insects, but they are totally different animals. Millipedes are myropods, spiders are arachnids, and there are other worms such as earthworms, roundworms, and flatworms. So we found a scorpion hiding inside the bark here, and just like the spiders, they are under the group of arachnids because, yeah, they have eight legs, not six legs, so they are not insects. Mm. So I actually do quite regular night walks with my bunch of friends. You know, just to walk around the forest at night to see what kind of animals you can find. Sometimes we'll find snakes, we'll find, definitely find a lot of insects, interesting critters, mammals as well. So, you know, the kulugos, sometimes flying squirrels as well. Somebody else, mouses, yeah, they all come out at night. And it's a very interesting experience. La. We found a caterpillar! So this caterpillar, right, you might think the one behind here, they are the legs, but no, the true legs are the ones in front here. They are like black and hardened and they're all just like concentrated at the thorax region which is what insects are supposed to be like. The back part, you see all these, these are called prolegs, aka the fake legs. So they're like suction packs and the main thing is just for the caterpillar to hold tightly onto a leaf lah, so that they can hang upside down just like this. Dr. Ang, thank you so much for today, for inviting us here. I hope you guys had fun, yeah? Yes, and I see you're still looking for insects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take the insect out of eh? You cannot take the insect out of uh, whatever lah. I don't know how to say lah. <laughs> Equipment I see. Make sure everything you have ah. Just the end of the adventure. It was hurrying but it was fun. As you guys can see, there's a huge diversity of insects. So not everything is just a bug, a bug, or a bug. There's also, you know, your earwigs. There's also your silverfish. There's also your stick insects. Insects literally create the biological foundations for many of the terrestrial ecosystems. So not only they pollinate our flowers, they can disperse the seed, they break down organic waste material back to the soil as nutrients. They are a major food source for a lot of animals and they themselves also control the population of many animals. So yeah, they are actually very, very, very important and they are not just pests that you can find at your homes and in your gardens. And the crazy thing about insects, right, is they are literally in a world of their own. They can have symbiotic or parasitic relationships with other animals. They can have fascinating mimicry or camouflage abilities, they can also have special defense mechanisms. So they are extremely cool. I really love insects and I will always say that they are one of the most underrated and underappreciated wildlife that we have here and everywhere else in the world. So I hope today's adventure has opened your eyes to the world of critters and their importance to our ecosystem. That's all for today. Just keep thinking. Bye-bye. I'm gonna go home. <laughs>